In this video, we're going to be talking about planarity and specifically what it means for a graph to be planar. So a graph G is planar if it can be drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. So note that the keyword here is can, not that it is drawn in the plane. So let's look at a couple examples of this. So are the following graphs planar? Okay, so here we have a graph, four vertices, five edges. There are no edge crossings in this one, so we can just see immediately, yes, this is planar. Okay, well, how about this one? Okay, now this one does have an edge crossing. Okay, but just because this picture of this graph um, has an edge crossing doesn't mean that every picture does. So if we think about the underlying graph here, so remember this is isomorphism. So if we take these four edges around the outside and then we put in one of the diagonals, well, this crossing occurs when we put in the other diagonal, but there's nothing stopping us from putting this around the outside like this instead. And now this is drawn in the plane with no crossings. So again, the answer is yes, this is a planar graph. This is not a planar embedding, um, it's called, but we'll learn more about embeddings later on. So let's look at another example. So this was K4, let's try K5. Okay, is this one planar? Now there are all sorts of edge crossings going on in the interior here, so let's try and sort of get a better drawing for this. So we'll put our five cycle around the outside. And now let's just say add these two edges. Those two can both be put in without making any crossings. And then there are three more edges. So instead of drawing this one across the inside, we can draw it around the outside. And similarly, maybe instead of drawing this one across the inside, we'll draw it across the outside. And now this edge is the only one left, but, and so far we're planar, right? I mean, this is a picture with no edge crossings, but now we're in a pickle, right? Because either you go through this triangular face but that's going to give you a crossing, so that's no good. <laughs> or you go around the outside, but you, then you're going to have to go through this one, and you'll get a crossing. So here the answer is no, right? K5 is not planar. Okay, so this is kind of tricky. Just because a graph has crossing doesn't mean it has to have crossings, okay? But a planar graph is one that can be, not that it is drawn with no crossings, just that it can be drawn with no crossings. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing I wanna point out is that drawing on the plane, so like drawing on a piece of paper or like me drawing on the screen here, that's the same thing as if you were to draw on the surface of a sphere. So to try and convince you of this, let's imagine a balloon. Okay, so imagine this balloon, and then let's make a graph on this sphere. Okay, so maybe we have... this graph embedded on the sphere, right? You can draw, imagine like you just took a marker and drew this on the surface of a balloon. And then we're gonna take a pen and we're gonna pop this balloon right here. Okay, and so then we're gonna get our hole over here. So the graph now looks like this, right? We sort of popped a hole into this area. And then we're gonna just sort of stretch that hole out. Okay, so now we've got um, okay, so this is going to be kind of tricky. Um, so here's our triangle, right, representing this triangle. And then from the ends of this triangle, this one is sort of going to go around. and come out, say, here, and this one goes here, right? Because we sort of stretched out this hole, so part of this is getting really stretched out around this. But this is still the same graph. 
And if you come and flatten out the rest of those edges, right, you sort of flatten down the sides of this bowl here, then we basically have something, right, and this one is just going sort of around the outside. And that's the same graph as this graph, right? I mean, they're isomorphic. Basically, we just took this edge and we stretched it out a lot and wrote it around the outside. <clears throat> okay, so this is just one example uh, of how you can think about this stuff. But basically, I'm just trying to convince you that if you can draw it on the surface of a balloon, right, draw it on the surface of a sphere, that's the same as being able to draw it on the plane because you can sort of pop a hole and stretch out the balloon real flat like a piece of paper. And that's going to come up um, later on when we talk more about graph embeddings. So I just want to start building your intuition. Um, but the last thing I want to talk about in this video is sort of a, an old word problem. It um, used to appear in like puzzle books around the turn of the century, um, around 1900 that is. So can three houses on the same street be connected to three utility companies each without crossing any of the lines? So in other words, I've got these three houses. And I want to run a water line to every house. I want to run an electric line to every house, right? And I want to run a cable line to every house. So essentially what I'm trying to do is connect a water line to all three of these houses, connect an electric line to all three of these houses, and connect a cable line to all three of these houses but I don't want to cross any of the lines, okay? So now you can see they're crossing all over the place in this picture. And we don't have to have, I mean, we don't have to have these things all approaching the same side of the house. So like, let's say this is water, electricity, cable. Like maybe the water goes like this, and then for this house it goes up here like this, and then for this house, it goes around the outside like this, right? And maybe the electric company goes out and around like this and then up to this house and over to this house, right? And so far, so good. And then, but you can see sort of the cable company's trapped now. The cable company can get to this house and it can get to this house, but there's no way for it to get to this house. So really what this is asking us in graph theory terms is, is the graph K33 planar? So remember, K33 is the complete bipartite graph with three vertices in each side. So here's three vertices representing houses. Here's three vertices representing utility companies. And so this is the graph in question, right? Every vertex on the top goes to every vertex on the bottom, and vice versa. And it turns out the answer is no. This is not planar. So you can sort of think about like this, I was just sort of drawing and trying to build it, but just because I drew this one, does that mean it's necessarily the best one? Not necessarily. Um, but let me try and sort of help your intuition for this. Uh, if we think about this graph, K33, what we could do is think about putting these vertices... So let me come down a little more. ...in a cycle like this. Okay, so if this is one two, three, and this is A, B, C on the different sides of our K33, then basically you're going to go 1, A, 2, B, 3, C. Now I don't have all my edges in this picture yet, but you can see that 1 is adjacent to A and C, and 1 needs to be adjacent to B. And 2 is adjacent to A and B, and 2 still needs to be adjacent to C, and 3 is adjacent to C and B, and 3 still needs to be adjacent to A. 
Okay, so we're missing all these diagonals. We're missing 3a, we're missing c2, and we're missing 1b. So this is a sort of easier to see why it's not planar, right? Because you can draw one of those diagonals inside, say 1b, and you can draw one of the diagonals around the outside, say c2. But now, to connect 3 and a, you can't go across the middle, you can't go across the outside. So it's not going to be a planar graph. And it turns out, so we saw earlier that k5 is not planar. And we just found out that k33 is not planar. And it turns out that these two roles, these two graphs, play a special role in determining whether or not a graph is planar, which we're going to learn about um, in some of the upcoming videos. So for this video, we learned about planarity, and in the next video, we're going to learn how to create something called the dual graph if you have a planar graph.